cancer is a leading cause of death worldwide, accounting for over 8 million deaths a year. There are enormous efforts trying to find better therapies. However, they come with a price tag in the billions. And a large fraction of clinical trials are actually not successful. Why is that? Well, one of the contributing factors is simply the fact that cancer is a very complex set of diseases. For example, here is a depiction of a cell and just a fraction of all proteins and interactions known to be involved in cancer. Quite overwhelming, right? Well, don't worry, I'll walk you through it. Let's just think of a cell as the motherboard of your computer and all of the interactions that have to be networked the right way in order for it to work properly. Well, cancer is the rewiring of these networks to give a cell a survival advantage. And so you can imagine that as we figure out more details about what goes wrong in a cancer cell, and as we develop better tools, our perspectives on how to treat cancer can change as well. Well, today, I'm going to tell you a story about how we changed our perspective on the role of a particular enzyme within this cancer network, protein kinase C, or PKC for short. This enzyme has been thought of as the bad guy in cancer, one of the bad guys in cancer, that needs to be stopped. However, our findings challenge this dogma. And most importantly, they might help save a lot of wasted efforts and money on future clinical trials. But let's first start with the basics of cancer. How and why does cancer actually occur? Well, tumors arise from cells that acquire mutations which enable them to divide at a faster rate than they should. This allows cells to gain even more mutations and eventually to break free from the, these inhibitory constraints on a normal cell and lead to a tumor formation. Now, in a simplistic view, there are two opposing forces acting on a cell. One is from oncogenes that drive this uncontrolled growth, and the other is from tumor suppressors that try to prevent it. Think of these two as the brake and accelerator in your car. The tumor suppressors being the brakes and the accelerator being the oncogenes, the drivers of cancer. You can press down on the accelerator, but, meaning you turn on to uh, oncogenes, but if your foot is on the brake, the car won't really move. Well, if you remove your foot off the brake, meaning you turn off tumor suppressors, while you press on the accelerator, the car will move. The cancer will grow, it will progress. So oncogenes are turned on and tumor suppressors are turned off in order for cancer to progress. So now that we've learned the basics of cancer, going back to our friend PKC and its role in cancer. Well, PKC has been getting a bad reputation. And why is that? Why do people try to inhibit to stop this enzyme in the treatment of cancer? Well, studies over 30 years ago have shown that a particular, uh, some particular drugs that promote tumors, called tumor promoters, these lead to tumor formation, these drugs also activate PKC. So the fact that these tumor promoters both activate PKC and lead to the formation of tumors led to the dogma that PKC enzymes positively contribute to tumor progression. And so these enzymes are thought of as oncogenes that drive cancer growth and therefore should be inhibited in the treatment of cancer. Consequently, a number of PKC inhibitors have entered clinical trials. 
across a multitude of different cancers over the last decade. However, these clinical trials have all failed. In fact, not only was it not beneficial to inhibit PKC in the treatment of cancer, it actually worsened outcome for certain cancers, such as a particular type of lung cancer. Now, why is that? We decided to look at PKC in human patients to figure out why these clinical trials might have failed. Now, I mentioned earlier that mutations give rise to cancer. Well, PKC is mutated in a multitude of cancers, such as lung, skin, and uh, colorectal cancers, among others. And so we decided to look at these mutations and figure out whether they're activating or inactivating PKC. To do so, we used a particular PKC activity reporter developed in the lab that you can see here changing color from blue to red as PKC is activated. And so using this reporter, we assessed about 8% of all PKC mutations identified in human patients uh, at the time of the study to figure out whether these mutations are turning PKC on or they're turning PKC off. Now, remember that oncogenes are turned on and tumor suppressors are turned off. So given this dogma that activation of PKC is what leads to cancer, one would expect that PKC mutations would be inactivated, would be, sorry, would be uh, activating. However, what we found is the opposite. In fact, over two-thirds of PKC mutations inactivated the enzyme. In fact, we didn't find a single activating mutation. So our study suggests that PKC is actually a tumor suppressor, not an oncogene, because mutations are turning it off. So what did we do now, given that our findings just contradicted an established dogma in the field that clinical trials have been based off of for a decade? Well, we decided to challenge this dogma. But first, we needed to look deeper and to really show that PKC is indeed a tumor suppressor. To do so, we took advantage of one of the biggest biotech discoveries of the century, genome editing. This technology enabled us to take a cell that contained one of those inactivating PKC mutations and cut out that piece of mutated DNA and replace it with a functional copy of PKC. So now we have the original cell that contains an inactivating mutation giving rise to a non-functional PKC, and the corrected cell in which the corrected functional PKC gene gives rise to a functional PKC enzyme. And we took these cells and looked at their ability to form tumors. The fact that having a inactivating PKC mutation is like having your foot off the brake. It allows the cancer to grow. And correcting that mutation is like putting your foot back on the brake. It prevents the cancer from growing. So this clearly demonstrated that PKC is indeed a tumor suppressor. So how could inactivation of PKC enhance tumor growth? Well, PKC has been shown to keep oncogenes in check and to enhance the activity of tumor suppressors. So an inactivating mutation would prevent it from doing so, allowing oncogenes to be on and tumor suppressors to be off. So this dogma that PKC activation contributes to cancer progression is wrong. Now, you're probably confused at this point because I just told you that these tumor promoters activate PKC to give rise to cancer, yet in human patients, mutations inactivate PKC to give rise to cancer. Well, what I haven't told you yet is that while indeed these tumor promoters are activating PKC to induce tumor formation, initially, over time, 
these tumor promoters actually destabilize PKC and lead to loss of PKC from the cell, meaning it's this loss of PKC that leads to cancer formation, not its activation. This just has not been fully appreciated before. So what I want you to do is maybe, perhaps through a stretch of the imagination, think of PKC as the Superman of the cancer metropolis. It acts as the good guy that puts the brakes on cancer. So our new found, uh, our, our findings on PKC really suggest that PKC activity should be restored in the treatment of cancer, not inhibited. So this is the opposite of what clinical trials have been trying to do for over a decade, wasting a lot of efforts and money on these. This is not an easy task, but at least we now know that we should stop wasting further efforts on trying to inhibit PKC in the treatment of cancer. I was amazed that after we published these results, a number of scientists came up to me to tell me that they too had data that supported this hypothesis that PKC is a tumor suppressor. But they never followed up on it or published it because it went against an established dogma. Well, I personally think that working on things that go against the common f theories in the field is exciting. It makes us realize that we have a lot left to learn. So what I want to leave you with is that science is a work in progress. As we develop better tools and add more pieces to this cancer puzzle, we can find better ways to fight it. Just remember that at some point, ancient civilizations believed that the world was flat and that someone had to say, hey, I have evidence to suggest that it's actually round. Well, scientists have now more recently shown that it's actually not perfectly round, it's a bumpy oblate spheroid, but you get the idea. As we develop our tools, we just have to keep an open mind and constantly edit our models because novel th uh, theories and findings allow us to see and test things in a different way. We just have to keep an open mind and constantly uh, challenge things in common things that we have evidence showing they're wrong. Thank you.